Welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast with your host, Funk Roberts. Hey, it's Funk Roberts here, and welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast. This is episode number 94. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Funk Roberts. I'm a former professional athlete. I'm an online fitness expert. I've been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox TV as a fitness expert. Uh, I've written two uh, best-selling Amazon books, and I'm known around the world as the guy who helps men in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond get in the best shape of their life. And how we do that, how I help men, is through mindset. It's through recovery. It's through sleep strategies and tips. It's through nutrition. It's through supplementation. It's through naturally increasing your testosterone and balancing your hormones. And of course, it's through workouts and training. And today I'm excited because I'm bringing you another episode from my 10 commandments series. Uh, we've already, you've already listened to the 10 commandments of nutrition. If you have not, you can uh, go back to episode number 90, episode number 90 actually, uh, is where we tackle the 10 commandments of nutrition for men over 40. And today we're going to tackle the 10 commandments of training workouts and exercise for men over 40, because listen, you can, we can't train the same way we, we used to, you know, I'm 53 years old. Uh, you know, I suffered a lot of the str struggles and barriers and, um, you know, the things that men who are in their late 30s or in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s are struggling with. I did. I went through that hole. I had low testosterone. I struggled. You can hear my origin story. Go back to episode 87. I wasn't always lean and ripped or jacked and ripped. I have not always been like that. In fact, I was big, puffy, big belly. And, and on top of that, four years ago, I almost died. I was on my deathbed, probably five years ago, actually, on my deathbed. And then I had to take prednisone which also killed my testosterone amongst, ever, uh, amongst other hormones. And so I'm not just here preaching, preaching, preaching. I live this every day. I live the alpha code every day. If you're looking here, you see my over 40 brotherhood. That's our tattoo. You look over here, that's who I am. I'm an over 40 alpha. O 48 alpha. Why? Because I live the alpha code. <laughs> this, the pillars that I just talked about, 24... 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 360, 56. How many days a year? 356, 365. I always get that mixed up. As you get older, you don't even care. I'm too busy building building businesses. I'm too busy. I'm too busy helping men change their lives because that's why I'm here. I found my purpose. It's to help men change their lives. So today we're going to talk about workouts and the best workouts you should be doing. I know that struggle. It's a struggle out there because. You know, when you want to get back into shape, what do most guys do? Oh, they get slap on the old Converse Chuck Taylors because you haven't gone to the gym in years and you go for a run and you go for a run. You go five miles one day, three, three miles another day. You go 10 miles another day and then your knees start to hurt. Your back starts to hurt. Your, your, uh, your hips are get, get tight because what you're doing ain't right. Ah, let me go to the gym. Let me walk into the gym. Uh, let me just sit in this machine here and start pressing, doing chest press on a machine. Or let me let me pick up these dumbbells and do a couple curls here and there and then kind of walk around. And, and now I don't feel comfortable because I have no clue what to do in here while all these other young cats are doing something and there's women looking at me and I'm out of place. I feel out of place because I don't know what I'm doing. Or you know what? My wife goes to this, this, this Pilates class. Let me go to my wife's Pilates class, my wife's yoga class, my wife's Zumba class. Ah, no, 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 not for me. Only man out there. I got bad yoga. I got, I can't, I can't balance properly. I'm not mobile. Forget about that. Let me go to my CrossFit. Let me go to do some CrossFit. I got a couple buddies. They joined the CrossFit. Look at all these, all these CrossFit guys are jacked. They're shredded. They're ripped. They're, they're supposed to be the best. I'm athletes on the planet. Let me go to the CrossFit class. Two weeks later, shoulder injury, lower back injury, knees injured. You know what? I just read uh, Muscle and Fitness for the. I'm getting back into into fitness, so I went to the I went to Shoppers Drug Mart or I went to the the local magazine shop. I picked up a Muscle and Fitness book. Let me open up that that book and started looking at it and see, oh, look, oh, wow. They just happened to have 
the perfect workout for men over 40. Muscle and fitness. Let's do it. Wait a minute. This ain't working. Still look the same. I actually don't even know how to do that exercise. Because that, 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 no disrespect to muscle and fitness because I've worked with muscle and fitness before. So I'm not disrespecting. I love muscle and fitness, actually. There's a book I've, I've done, uh, you know, I've been part of, uh, you know, I've, I've read when I was younger and I've done stuff with muscle and fitness. So I love all fitness magazines. I, and, you know, my goal is to try to legitimately give them content for men over 40, not, oh, here's a workout. Let's just slap men over 40 on it because the guy who's doing the workout is about kind of looks like he's 40, but nah, man, nah, man, nah, man, nah, man, nah, man. You need a program, you need workouts, and you need a training session that's dedicated and focused for men over 40. We can't train the same way we used to back in the day. And we can't rely on 30-year-olds who write articles or 20-year-olds who post YouTube videos that slap on workout for men over 40 to give us our workouts because they're not struggling like we, we are. They don't have belly fat to lose. They're not struggling trying to build muscle. They're not struggling getting out of bed with shoulder pain, back pain, knee pain. They're not struggling with just not having drive to get up and go to the gym. They're not struggling with man boobs, with belly fat. They're not struggling with that. So don't listen to those fools. And yes, I call them fools. Because if you're not if you're not seriously, seriously doing something for men over 40, seriously doing your homework, doing the research, doing the science, reaching out to Funk and go, hey Funk, I'm doing this workout for YouTube. Can you look it over to make sure it makes sense? Get the fuck out of here, man. You're wasting everybody's time and you're getting men injured. We don't got time for that. We have a very limited margin of error. So we've got to make sure that we're doing the right workouts with the right training program, the using you know the right amount of time, you're not training for too long, which I'll, I'll, get, I'll get through all that in the Ten Commandments. But the cool thing is the workouts that you should be doing for men over 40, you've never done before. You've never done these before. That's the great thing. Like the great thing is it's not your fault because like I just mentioned all the things and, and I'm sure there's way more. All the people, all these influencers who have no, who don't give a shit about you. They just want to make money. All these guys who are now turning 40, but they've been training like their thirties and twenties. And all of a sudden they turn 40 and all of a sudden magically they know how to, to train you all of a sudden because they, they just turned 40. So all of a sudden I know the exact workouts I've been over 40 need because I just turned 40. Nah, man, doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. I'm 53 and I've been training men over 40 for many years. And if you look at our over 40 alpha.com forward slash proof, that's exactly what you're going to get. Thousands of completely transformed lives and bodies. Why? Because we're not killing our bodies. We're doing exactly what will maximize our hormones, the right hormones, minimizing the, the testosterone killing hormones, the health killing hormones sustainability i've got 36 phases in my programming 36 you know that's three years of programming phase after phase different workouts different protocols and as, and as you progress through workouts get tougher workouts get different all put together with purpose we have mobility we have ab and core we have warm-ups we have stretches we have a, a full program that maximizes your hormones, maximizes your metabolism, maximizes fat loss because it's about fat percentage, gives you the drive to get up and do workouts, gives you the sustainability. And not just that. Now it's about living a healthy life. It's about going hiking with your, with your family when you go, when you travel. It's about running around with your kids. And you know what I love the best? And you're going to hear it now in this podcast episode. I love when guys go back to play the sports they used to love and dominate because that's what happens when you train the way we train. We go back and we dominate in jujitsu and win, win ADCC Masters Championships. We dominate going back to Masters Cycling. Uh, we dominate doing the Alcatraz Swim. We dominate playing Masters Pro Basketball. Um, uh, we dominate 
with uh, playing ba- going back and playing baseball, and we dominate on the ice when we when we go when we go back and play shinny with the older guys or younger guys. Why? Because we're in better shape. We understand how the importance of different aspects of training and recovery is. So we know how to how to we learn how important warm up, stretch, mobility, so that we don't get injured so that we can maximize the th- with the things that we love doing. We we have guys with, going in and fighting for the first time in their lives. Muay Thai, boxing, jiu-jitsu. It's amazing. Rel- like in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, man. We're not talking 20 and 30-year-olds. And we're talking about guys who never thought it would be possible. Why? Because as the pillars of our Over 40 Alpha program dictates – Exercise, workouts, and training are extremely important, but we have to do it right. And these 10 commandments that I'm going to share with you that I shared with my brothers on our weekly coaching call. Oh, yeah. Weekly live coaching call. Every week, Sunday, 10 a.m. You could be on it too. Over40alpha.com. Just pay $1. 30 days. I'm going to get you results. But before you even go down that road and you have no clue who I am. I'm just here preaching, preaching, telling you, I know, I know this is the best way. Well, I know because the proof is in the pudding. Like I said, all you have to do is go to over 40 alpha.com forward slash proof and just scroll for 20 minutes. Cause that's how long it's going to take you. Not probably an hour, probably an hour. Cause you're going to have to watch some of the videos and then you're going to have to read the posts and you're going to see the images and that'll take you an hour. That's how many guys. So I'm excited to bring you this. Because now you're going to know the type of workouts. At the end of this podcast, you're going to know exactly the type of workouts you should be doing, the type of session you should be doing, and what to stay away from as we get older so that we can live till we're 99 and not live till we're 99 in a wheelchair so we can run around with our great-grandchildren and see our legacy prosper. So relax, sit down. Also, because you're going to relax and sit down, I'm going to hook you up with 10% off at my Funk Supplement Shop. It's got supplements. I've got uh, equipment, resistance bands, you know, foam rolling, foam rollers. I've got programs on that site. And, of course, my, my top supplements, my Alpha Max Test 3D testosterone booster, natural testosterone booster. You heard of it. You heard me in, in Dr. Stephen Anton last in episode number 93 talk about the power of that. We've got our Alpha Lean Pro protein powder. Um, I'll probably shoot a video, a video on the importance of protein. Um, that we're not getting enough protein, but it is the best protein powder on, on the planet, period. End of story. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Listen, man, I'm not here to, I'm not here to, I'm not here to fool around. When you're, when you're, when the guy who you're, 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 you're getting information from has tattoos that relate to the, 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 the community and the program and that he lives by what he preaches, you don't have anywhere else to go. You can, because because knowledge is power but in the end you can always come back to me i will always be here i ain't going anywhere i've been here from the beginning 15 years ago and i'm still here and i still will be here 15 years from now so you know that when you're ready to get results and stop bashing your head trying to find out trying to figure out why this ain't working this ain't working because you're you're, you're, you put yourself on the pedestal you're not taking yourself off the pedestal and asking for help from someone who knows exactly what to do. There are guys out there who know exactly what to do for men over 40. I'm not saying I'm the only one. There are men out there. But just be aware of where you're getting your information from, who you're getting it from. Who's actually writing the article? Is it just a blog? Is it just someone who writes for the for the magazine who's just writing a random article? No respect, no disrespect to the women, but women I wouldn't write an article on 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 how women should train during menopause because I'm not a woman who has menopause, nor do I work with women who have menopause. So you probably shouldn't be reading articles and then following articles that are written by a woman who is 25 years old, who's writing an article about men over 40, unless there's a co-author alongside. I, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because if you look at a lot of the articles out there, they're just they're not written by the people who live the code. And again, no disrespect to the woman. Actually, I don't give a shit if you feel like you're disrespected, but I'm not disrespecting the 25-year-old who's writing articles about men over 40 because she's just doing her job. 
or the 25 year old guy who's writing articles about men over 40 because he's just doing his job. But I ain't listening to a 25 year old guy and I'm not listening to a 25 year old woman. I'm not listening to no CrossFitter. I'm listening to anybody who doesn't live the code as a man in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, who's getting it right. Are you ready to listen now, my brothers? Because I'm about to give you the 10 commandments of workouts, fitness, and exercise for men over 40. And if you don't know, because you didn't know, now you're going to know. I wish I could use Biggie's Ten Commandments coming into this. I really do, but I can't. But that this is the perfect platform for the Ten Crack Commandments beat in the back. To, to I think I think that beat was actually J. Ru the I think J. Ru I think Premier made that beat for J. Ru the Damage actually. I think that's what that where that beat came from first. J. Ru Damage was doing something for for uh, for the the rap radio station in New York. And they you and he took that beat and J Ru rapped over the beat, and then Biggie took it afterwards and I icon- made it an I- iconic track. So think about that every time these ten commandments come on. And uh, I love you guys. You're awesome and enjoy the podcast. Today we're going to talk about the ten commandments of workouts and training um, for men. Hopefully, just before I start, I am going. This is going to be a, a, a mini series because i think that you know you get a lot of information and the good thing is for those of you who've been in the program a lot you're already following a lot of this stuff but as i mentioned before you know drilling uh hearing things over and over again it just becomes more ingrained uh into your mind and psyche and sometimes you just may forget and sometimes you may not even know Sometimes there may be people who are like, I still don't know why we use these type of workouts, or I still don't know why I'm not supposed to do this, or why, you know, I should be focusing on that. Sometimes it, it's just, you know, I may not have, you may not have known why you do certain things. So this is uh, today we're going to talk about workouts and training, and why we do certain workouts and training. Um, so, like I say, we all know that exercise, that workouts are essential. Like it's essential. Um, you know, all the pillars are essential, but this is one of the things that are, are even more, um, it does get overlooked a lot. Uh, well, a lot of, it all gets overlooked. But the reason why I'm saying this is because the older we get, the more we have to be moving, the more exercise becomes even more of, uh, uh, crucial. It becomes crucial. It becomes something we have to do. Um, you know, we can't miss workouts. We can't miss exercise. I don't, and I'm not saying you got to crush yourself every single time but we have to keep moving because as we get older we're losing strength we're losing muscle and a lot of times if we're busy we overlook the workouts right we, some of us will stay focused on nutrition but the like, guy ah, i don't really feel like working out or i'm a little bit tired or, or what have you which is why we have we we set up the we set everything up the way it is so you have the mobility which is still to me a type of uh exercise when you're doing mobility or yoga or anything like that because we have to keep moving right and and it's even crucial because if we stop moving it is that much harder to get back if we get injured you know with injuries it's so hard to get back and it just it just sets everybody down uh you know a, a negative road i mean i've been injured for three years still but i also know that what keeps my what keeps the pain down is actually working out and and uh and doing mobility like if i miss a workout i feel it the next day like i the pain is 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 even more obviously you're working out smarter but like i said as we get older in our 50s and our 60s and se- even 60s and 70s specifically again it's not trying to get six pack abs and 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 trying to get build big massive biceps but it is exercising and moving in in in, in ensuring that the workouts and exercise you do are not just going to the gym, sitting down in a, in a, in a chair, a machine and just pushing, you know, okay, I'm just doing chest press. It's going to be more than that because we don't just, we don't do this all day. In fact, I don't know when we do this ever during, during the, during the day, sit in the chair and do this. That doesn't happen. So, but everything else happens. We do this and we do this and we do this, but, and we do up this, but this, that, that doesn't happen. So, we got we to gotta make sure that we're, as we're getting older, again, depending on what stage we're in, you know, obviously in our, in our late 30s, 40s, and even 50s, uh, 
you were you, you could still strive to be uh you know still strive to be jacked and ripped and and have muscles and just be more muscular even in the 60s i mean there's guys in this program that are 70s sort of like that and again i think if you guys listen to my uh my podcast, the podcast yesterday with my sister uh, uh, and cousin uh, Devel, like we were talking about, like we're going to be living longer too, right? We're going to be we're going to be living, or maybe that was BJ Gador, but anyway, we're going to be living longer and we're going to be living healthier longer. Actually, I did talk to her about that because our grandmother's ninety nine and gangsta granny has died, but she was in her uh, our gangsta granny was in her was in a wheelchair, right? She still was a gangster even in the wheelchair she was a gangster man. <laughs> she was the matriarch of our of our family but we always say we don't want to be like gangster granny when we're, when we're 99 like we want to be able to walk around and do things and all of that stuff so and we will be able to because of what we know so again the workouts are very very important i just don't, i just want to make sure that um that that does that never gets pushed aside you know for too long if you're injured, there's still things we, you can do. Um, and then when I go through the 10, the 10 commandments, you're going to see, it's not just about like sitting in the chair, like I said, but, but, you know, cause according to the studies and there's lots of studies, you know, me, I'm into my research and study studies, um, you know, adding re uh, resistance training, muscle building and metabolic training is essential for us as we get older. It's essential for us. Um, Specifically, because yes, we want to gain muscle, but we want to keep the metabolism going, our metabolic health, and 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 decrease our chance of getting injured. Uh, so as we get older, there's things that we suffer from. There's things that are against us right off the bat. Our testosterone levels and hormones are imbalanced, but our testosterone levels naturally decrease. We need testosterone for muscle building, for our metabolism, for energy to get off the couch and work out for the drive to be able to get off the couch and work out or to do things. Um, we need that. We need that, the, our testosterone. We need it for our, our health, like health issues, like diabetes and, and heart issues and strokes and even cancer. Like when your T levels are high, when your testosterone levels are high, the chance of you getting all of those at a, at a younger uh, age diminishes. Like, I mean, there's so much science behind, like they look at all the people, uh, you know, I just had, Dr. Stephen Anton on on uh, on on the on a podcast. It's come. It will be coming out in a few weeks. But we're, Stephen Anton is the one that uh, we created this Alpha Max test together. But but Dr. Stephen Anton he specializes in metabolic health, obesity, hormones, um, aging, anti aging, and one of the studies that he that they did they did a study with men who were obese uh, and just chances of getting chronic illnesses or whatever but but when they were bringing everybody in and they did a lot of the tests 95 i think percent of those men had low testosterone very low testosterone and th they weren't testing for that but they were just like oh, oh what the hell and they started to look down and that was like obesity oh diabetes obesity low testosterone like you know what i mean so like it's all of that plays in to the fact that, oh, well then for us, it may, now that we know a lot, little bit more about how testosterone, um, you know, how it affects our bodies. Um, again, it's just like an eye opener, right? Like the, the correlation is right in front of us. Um, so we lose that. We also lose muscle mass due to sarcopenia, due to aging, muscle mass and strength too. Strength. And you can even still build a little bit of muscle like you can still seem like you're a little bit more muscular and still lose strength depending on the type of workouts you're doing right so because we are continuously losing strength and of course our fat uh increases right our fat body fat increases depending on the lifestyle so there's a lot of things that happen the problem is there's a lot of confusing information out there right and it can be frustrating a lot of times we get to a point where i i, I was in that point where i had no clue what workouts to do I didn't know if I should be doing, uh, you know, still do bodybuilding and add cardio long. When I say cardio, I mean like 45 to 60 minutes on the treadmill or stair climber or, you know, whatever, and do 60 minute biceps, triceps. Like I didn't, I didn't know what at the time when I was struggling because there was nothing out there to tell us, but well, wait a minute, these are the type of workouts you should be doing. So it could be frustrating. And what many people don't realize is that a lot of the plans 
that are out there are harmful for us, right? They may be right off, you know, P90X is a huge example of this. P90X, when it first came out, I mean, it was huge. Tony Tony Horton was great. I mean, I, I love Tony Horton. I'm, get him, I'm trying to get him on the podcast. Um, you know, and, and it made a difference with so many people completely, you know, like transformed the body or felt better or, you know, and a lot of times it was younger people, but it was older guys too. The problem was a lot of other, other, other things started to pop up because of the, the volume of the workouts for, for older people, you start getting shoulder issues, knee issues, a little bit of back issues, or after the, after the P90X was done, then what? There was really nothing else. There wasn't another one that came out like a year or two later, but that's a year or two later, P90 Super X or whatever it was called. I can't remember, um, extreme, but that was like, that's not a plan that keeps you going um, specifically, right? And I used to get a lot of people coming and go, hey, I, I did really well with P90X, but now I don't know what to do, right? And then of course, like I said, a lot of the other, other programs out there aren't really designed for us, right? For longevity. So- I can't, it, 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 and it does, and puts us in unsafe positions, has, having, has us do unsafe things at certain points of, uh, of the workout as opposed to kind of building us up. So instead of seeing results, you try, you, and, and there's other programs that are just trying to kill you. Like literally, they just want, there's no rhyme or reason, but for you to just get tired. Or you go to a class, a boot camp class, there's no rhyme or reason, just I'm going to set up all these little stations and you're, I'm just going to try to kill you. Doesn't matter what station you're in, and doesn't matter how the exercise selection set up. We're just trying to we're just trying to 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 get you to sweat, to feel tired, and again, that puts strain on the body, right? You just feeling you just feel exhausted, but you really don't see that big of a difference. Maybe at first you do, of course. At first, when you're starting a new program, you're you're going to see results much quicker. But it's it's about longevity. So sar sarcopenia, natural loss of muscle. Due to aging, that is one thing that we suffer from. Metabolism slowing down as we get older due to lifestyle, increased belly fat, a lot of these things, um, you know, we're deal we're dealing with. So, how do we ensure that we're doing the right type of workouts that will help us build muscle, um, get stronger, and and help our help our hormones? balanced what type of workouts do we do that will kickstart our metabolism not only during the workouts but hours and hours after keeping that resting metabolic rate up right because metabolic health is is another crucial thing we got to keep our metabolism going and because of the the lifestyle we lead whether it's food intake whether it's the type of work we do you know a lot of times it may not just be something that you're doing on purpose it may be the situation you're in because of the type of work that you do like it's me sitting in front of a computer all day um, doesn't give you an opportunity to 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 get keep the metabolism going right. But there's certain workouts that you can do that can have you still burning calories when you're sitting at your computer. And when you have that knowledge about okay, oh yeah, the resting metabolic rate. It's not just about what I burn. It's not just how many calories I burn in the workout. Hey, Frank, I did this workout. I only burned 300 calories. Yeah, but how much are you going to burn after? Like, what's the total caloric, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the total calories you burn for, from that one workout, right? You got to be able to, to track hours and hours after as opposed to just, oh, this workout wasn't too tough because I only, I only burned 300 calories. Yeah, you burned 300 calories or 250 calories in just 20 minutes, but you kept your hormones, testosterone and, and, and growth hormones at the perfect, uh, you know, levels. You didn't increase your cortisol levels. Uh, it was quick. It was intense. And you're burning calories longer due to the epoch or the afterburn effect, which, which people know. Um, how do we fight increased belly fat, right? Like, you know, the belly, a lot of the belly fat that most of us have when we're in a situation where just, you know, um, joining a program is a lot of it's visceral belly fat, right? And that's the dangerous fat. That's the one that's due to too much estrogen. That's the fat around the liver. That's a, and that's, that's the, that's the, the fat that will kill you, right? That's the one that will kill you specifically if it's around the liver. So, you know, number one, we've got to try to get our belly fat down. We got to try to get our body fat percentage down. Unfortunately, the belly is the last place our fat wants to leave. Um, not saying that you have to have the six pack, but again, what can we do 
to help ensure that we're not storing too much cortisol because cortisol causes belly fat storage. We're not uh, holding on to too much estrogen and we're burning a lot of that fat. Just the, not only regular fat on the surface, but the visceral fat, that's the dangerous stuff. So let's go through these 10 commandments and uh, think through um, what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. So commandment number one, stop doing long cardio on the elliptical or the stair climber or the treadmill. I mean, I used to have a, a joke that some guys would really get, um, they would get very uh, offended by it, but I would literally, I mean, uh, anyways, you know, the long cardio, 60 minutes, 45 minutes, that long cardio that we that we all have done and most people it's the first thing that you want to do if you're just getting into training right if you're just getting back in you haven't trained in years or you haven't had a steady program in years what what are the two things i see guys do number one they start running that's that's number one thing it's like i've i've seen it multiple times guys in this, in this where i live are going out for a run the only problem is knees back the joints take a beating. We can't go on long runs unless you're an actual runner, but most of us weren't runners. Most of us are overweight. And now we want to go for two Ks or, or sorry, two mile runs, three mile runs, five mile runs. Yeah. They may start off. Okay. But that's not sustainable because your body starts to break down. And then once that happens, you're putting on even more fat. Um, or we get on the treadmill or we go to the gym now that gyms are open. We're like, okay, let me just get on the treadmill and, you know, I'll just walk or, you know, do the elliptical or because, because I'm doing the elliptical, I must be working my arms and my legs. I mean, anyways, I'm not going to get into just those type of <laughs> machines. Again, they'll give you probably, you will lose some weight at the very beginning for sure. You'll lose, you'll lose weight, but Long cardio does a few things. Number one, it increases our stress hormone, which is cortisol. Because we're doing it for a long period of time, we're doing moderate because you can't go high intensity for 60 minutes. Uh, impossible. So it's it's just that moderate, you know, going at a speed for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes. One, cortisol levels increase. Cortisol causes belly fat storage. Cortisol blocks your testosterone. Cortisol eats away at your muscles. That's the, uh, Too much cortisol also eats away at the muscles. Mo and, and the more muscles we have, the more metabolic we have, or the more metabolic we are, which means the more, the more fat we're going to burn resting. Okay. So that's number one. Cortisol is huge. Number two, it increases your cravings and your hunger. Like it actually increases it. it incre the, even though um, you're burning all of those calories, you're burning a lot of calories, sure, because you're doing it for a long period of time. But what happens is it increases your, your leptin, uh, which, which causes you to, to eat, want to eat more. So you end up, you may only burn, you may only burn 300 calories, but you end up eating six or 700 because of, because just, it's just your, your hormones that, that are, that are related to eating are increased they are off balance. So that's number two. Number three is long cardio because of the cortisol will eat away at your muscle. Right. So if you, you know, there's a meme, the, the meme that you see where it's the sprinter versus the, the distance runner, right. Long marathon runner. You look at the body difference, um, sprinter, sprint, short, intense, you know, uh, that's it. They don't, they don't go for long runs. Uh, but, a a, a a marathon runner, they run for hours. They run 20, 30 miles, 15 miles, 10 miles, 20 miles, day in and day out, because they got to practice. They got to, they got to drill. They got to be able to do that. But if you look at the body, you can blow on them in the fall over. They got zero muscle and they're just going at one, at one, they're just doing that. Everything's one plane of motion, right? So you're not going to be able to hold on to muscle when you're going, when you're doing that over and over again and joints as well, because all of that, even if you're at the gym doing long bouts, it's a lot of volume on our body. So Again, I'm just talking about for men over 40. I'm not talking about anybody else, right? And I'm, and no, I'm not talking about anybody else, but generally speaking, I used to go to the gym and I would see the same people year after year doing the exact same thing and they look exactly the same. 
Like they still have the belly. They may feel good, but this isn't about feeling good. Okay, I, that's the other thing I want you guys to get out of your head. Working out isn't about isn't about oh, I, well, you know what? I I feel good when I do it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if you feel good when you do it. You also feel good when you eat chocolate. You feel good when you go and have pizza. But none of those three things, going on a cardio machine for hours and hours because your body's going to get also adapt to it. So if you're just doing this every single day, month in and month out, you're not doing anything, right? You're just, you're looking at that little thing that says you burn that many calories, but your body's not generally burning that many calories because now your body's like, hey, that, hey man, hey, Funk, we've been doing this for months now. Like, give me something different. We already, we can do this. We can do this forever. We can break the, the world record now because we've been doing this for so long. Our body just works in this range of motion. So it's not good for us. We're not doing all the other things that we need to do in order for us to pick up something, in order for us to like, if we have to walk sideways or, or move sideways without falling over because we haven't trained the muscles and the movements to do that. So it doesn't matter if it, it may, we're not here to make you feel good. Yes, of course, some workouts do make you feel good just because of the type of workout it is. But I've said this to you guys many times, I don't look forward to training. I never, maybe 5% of the time I look for, I'm like, okay, I can't wait for this workout. The other 95%, it's like, fuck, I gotta do this. Are you kidding me, man? I'm not looking forward to this, but hey, I have to do it because I know the benefits and I also know the prolong, the sustained gratification that I will feel better at the end of the workout and I will feel better, harder, tougher. And, and again, it's just building the, the, the the you know just building our shield right just it's, it's making us stronger mentally physically emotionally it's releasing this the, the the hormones it needs to it's fighting off all the free radicals like all of those things it's not just about i feel good when i do it funk so i do it no but not now maybe when you're younger sure but not now there is a reason there is a reason why we do these things it is it is to prolong it's to make us strong. It's to keep us healthy. It's to keep us moving in all planes of motions. It keeps our mind um, focused. And, and, it, and it just, again, challenges us every single day. It puts us in that uncomfortable position. This is not comfortable if you've been doing it for months over months. This is just, I can do it. Yeah, great. I'm comfortable here. I don't want to go anywhere else. I don't want to do anything else. I'm comfortable. So no long, long uh, cardio. Now, let me, so that's, so let me just add this caveat. If once in a while you want to do that, like, you know what, today, uh, you know, I'm, uh, today I've been, I've been hitting my body hard this week and I just want one day where I can just get on the treadmill and still kind of do a long or not treadmill to get on the bike or whatever and just do a long, a long thing, or maybe go for a long hike or a long walk a hundred percent a hundred percent because now you're hitting the aerobic but it's not something you're doing all the time you're just like oh today because it's been three months since i've done anything like this let me just check out my aerobic let me, let me just check out my aerobic system let me let me do something that's outside my comfort zone because now i'm comfortable hitting it hard let me try to do something you know a little bit longer or just a little bit easier on the joints you know what I mean? Like there is a time and place for that. Like if you're injured, if you're coming off of an injury and you still need to get, you know, that, that exercise, I, again, I wouldn't, I would only, I wouldn't do more than 30 minutes. I would not do more than 30 minutes, but, but what I'm saying is sometimes you will need to get on, on something like a, some, maybe not elliptical, but maybe a bike or something, or maybe it's a walk because you have, you're, you're recovering from something, but I'm talking, when I talk about get, don't do long cardio, I'm talking about if that's your main source of cardio. But once in a while, 100%, yes, you're, again, it's just, it's another type of training. It's just not the one we're going to be doing because we think it's going to help us burn fat, right? Oh, what, what's our cardio? Oh, Funk, I need more cardio. You, you, you know how, how you get more cardio from our workouts? You actually increase the intensity. You move faster through the exercise and get more reps done, or you add weight and then move faster. That's how you're gonna get more cardio and conditioning. And that's how you're gonna get more fat burning. It's not, I need a cardio workout. We do, that's what metabolic training is. It's resistance training, metabolic, which gives you the cardio. If you're not getting enough cardio, if you're not feeling tired after the workout, 
it, when you have energy, then you have to check yourself. Am I, am I giving this enough intensity? Right. Am I using, if, if I'm still using 20 pounds when I could probably go up to 30 pounds and then that increases the, the intensity of the workout makes me a little bit more tired. It hits my, my, my heart a little bit better. So number one, no more long cardio as your main or long, uh, you know, sessions on the, on the elliptical or stair climber or bike or treadmill as your cardio workout because it's damaging us. Number two, no more bodybuilding style, bro split style, traditional weight training splits. Because again, what we look at as classic bodybuilding, basically what we've been doing probably up till to now, up till now, unless you've been in this program for a while. So like, so for, so for instance, you know, buys and tries, back and shoulders, legs and, uh, and uh, you know, maybe legs and whatever, and then chest and then one day off and then repeat. So you're doing six days a week, you're hitting specific body parts or other people just do one body part per day with no rest in between, right? All bodybuilding, the bro splits, you're, the bro, that's what really what a bro split is. It's like you're, you're, you're just over, overloading the body, but you're only hitting specific body parts. Again, why shouldn't we be doing that as our main source of training? Number one, because it does put too much volume on our, on our joints. We don't recover the way we used to. So that's number one. And um, not only do we not recover, but our joints aren't as strong as, as they were. Specifically, if we haven't been working out forever, and now you want to get in the gym and start throwing around weights like you did back in the day, you soon will see, you'll get the shoulder injuries, you'll get the knee, the elbow injuries, you'll get back injuries because you're doing bent over rows, you know, like uh, most guys skip leg day, So now you're not even hitting legs. Like, I mean, if you're going to go with the same mentality you did before, you're not, you're not doing legs because <laughs> no one ever did legs, <laughs> right? It's chest, it's back, it's, it's whatever. But, you know, you start looking at the magazines or going online, you're seeing, oh, I'm going to do that workout program. But again, those those workouts aren't good for our joints, too much volume. Number two, doesn't give us any time to recover because muscles are broken down in the gym, right? When we're training, we're, 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 we're making our muscles catabolic. We're, we're ripping and tearing muscle fibers so that the next day or when we're sleeping, it gives our, our muscles a chance to recover, to grow, to get stronger so that when we hit it again, we're going to be ready for it. Our muscles are going to be ready for it. We need that recovery time, specifically as we get older. The other thing too is, remember I talked about cortisol, right? So there's a magic window for when our growth hormones and our testosterone are, are working well and our cortisol levels, right? Because when we work out, we do increase cortisol. We need cortisol throughout the day. We need it when we work out. We need it when we're driving. I need it right now. My cortisol levels are probably high right now because I'm presenting this to you guys. So my cortisol levels are high, but it's the chronic cortisol, right? If you have a workout, like we generally do 20, 30 minutes metabolic, our cortisol level will decrease right out, right, right after we're done. Our cortisol will be like, oh, okay, you don't need me anymore. Boom, done. But when we do bodybuilding style workouts, it just, you're just increased. Your cortisol just continues to rise. It gets to that point where now it's, it's, you're diminishing the hormones that we need to help us build muscle, to help us burn fat, to help us maximize, you know, the, the, the training that we're doing. And we're increasing the, the, again, we're increasing cortisol, which will eat away at our muscle. That's why a lot of guys at our age have a hard time building muscle, not just a sarcopenia, but this type of training, this type of training is not built for us. Now, if you're Brian, is Brian on here? If you're Brian P and you're actually training to step on stage, that's different because there's a, there's a reason behind that. So, but it's not just, there's a lot that goes into that. It's not just doing buys, tries back. There's new nutrition that's involved. There's the proper recovery that's involved. And because it's, it's, it's an actual sport, really you're bodybuilding. So now you're, you're focusing on symmetry, right? You're either a hundred percent, bodybuilding on stage ready to go or you're not there's no in between at our age right there's no in between you can't just kind of just oh let me just get on the you know do this body bodybuilding style train now that's one the other the other way you would use this is if you needed to 
actually you would never use it like this so yes no you would never use it you, you would our for our age the only time you would you would train this specific way for for it would be if you're stepping on scale because our stepping on stage because you do need to focus on each muscle group but again there's more that goes into it right so um you're not gonna you're not gonna get the gains that we used to because we're not getting that that recovery increasing in your cortisol the hormonal responses are not going to be what we need um you're also not going to stimulate fat metabolism because the type of workouts those are have you doing short um, uh, small amount of reps with a longer rest time that's why when people do the hyper my hypertrophy program the hypertrophy program which is a 90 day muscle mass building program, muscle building mass metabolic program. We're only training four days a week, first of all. So even though we are breaking down and hitting muscle groups specifically, it's only four days a week. But what happens is up when people are used to doing the 30 minute workouts and now they're doing a, a, a six, seven, a 50 minute workout, a little bit longer, even though our rest periods are still short, the workouts go a little bit longer because you're it's not going from one exercise to another another. I keep that I still keep the rest periods very short, like 90 seconds, but it still ends up being a long workout because you're just you're just the the, the way the those workouts are set up, it's just it's set up even if you're focused and not on your phone for you don't do uh like I'm going to do bench press eight times, boom, and then you're sitting there for 2 3 4 minutes. Oh yeah, I forgot. I got to do my second set again, right? That because that's generally what happens when you're at the gym. You're just you get sidetracked, or you're on your phone, and next thing you know, it's taking you 20 minutes just to do three sets of eight reps of chest. I mean, so so again, just, it, there is a way that you can use hypertrophy training. There is a way that you can use mass building at our age. You just have to be smart. The old bodybuilding, the old bro splits, all of the old style does not work for us right now. Unless you're Brian P and you want to stand on stage and you know and 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 crush everybody because he it was amazing to see a 50 year old man on stage looking shredded and jacked for his very first uh, you know time on stage. But him and his wife, you know, um, they it's a different type of training. It's a different type of training, nutrition. There's a lot else that goes into it. Um, and also just the lack of frequency too. So I'm just going to end off with this again, when you're only training one body part per week, you're not hitting it again, right? You're, you're not hitting it again. So you're not hitting each muscle that we need to hit, right? We want to be, we want to maximize our, 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 our training so that we can hit our muscles a little bit more, um, than, you know, a not giving it enough time to rest and be only hitting it once a week because we're not giving enough time to rest. That makes sense. So, uh, and the other, and the other type of training. So I'm going to go from one, one end that we shouldn't be doing to the other is CrossFit. This is still commandment. Number two, CrossFit really high intensity now, right? So when CrossFit became popular, it's still popular, but I'm not sure how popular it is right now for new people just coming in. I don't know. Cause I'm just so disconnected, but I do know that, you know, six years ago, literally every one of my buddies were, they were doing CrossFit at some point. Oh yeah, I'm going to do CrossFit, I'm doing a CrossFit gym. Yeah. I'm trying to lose weight. And then all of them got injured because, and it is no, it's no fault of, of the CrossFit gym because CrossFit's a sport. Um, and every CrossFit gym is different. Some CrossFit gyms will have you, um, you know, will, 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 will help you with technique and technical stuff. Angela did CrossFit five years ago and, Three weeks in, she messed up her back and shoulders, right? Because it's just, <laughs> although it looks sexy, because you see all of the of the the, the box jumps and the handstand press ups and all the Olympic lifts and all that stuff, it's just too, the the intensity, the volume, and the type of training is too much for our muscles, our joints, our body, and and CrossFit is a sport, so you're only moving in certain uh planes of motion and you're only doing certain exercises they don't really even though they use they say oh yeah we have olympic lifting and gymnastics and this and that and all the other shit it is only a certain amount of exercises that you do that cover it right there's way more to all of those exercises uh, and all of those types of training but they only do 
ring ring muscle ups and regular muscle ups and you know ring uh dips and they consider that olympic or handstand they consider that the olymp the uh sorry the gymnastic style training but there's more to that we do more of everything than a crossfit uh program would do because again it's a sport it's an actual sport that they train for for the crossfit games which you can't even train for because they just throw random stuff at you right which is which is why i like i like it because it does uh teach someone how to mentally uh strategically and then physically attack each one of those um to attack each one of those sports but anyway that's something that you, again you wouldn't want to go to so let's go to um let's go to commandment number three which is training more with total body metabolic training right so metabolic training short so me what metabolic training is it's short uh workouts 20 to 30 minutes uh, it's metabolic, so the intensity is a little bit high where you're moving from one exercise to another with little to no rest in between. And what that type of training does, uh, and studies have shown that for men over 40, training like that three to four times a week um, will give you better results than doing bodybuilding style training or, or, or any, any other style of training because that does allow us to hit multiple muscle groups it allows us to train in multiple planes of motion and when i talk about metabolic training i'm talking about the workouts need to include progression hypertrophy mobility conditioning unilateral combination movements isometrics functional movements uh, all movement patterns rotational anti-rotation cardio progression progressive overload plyometrics strength and, and endurance along with other stuff. And the great thing about metabolic training is you can hit all of that stuff within a training plan that will allow you, oh, there's, there's some progression here. I can see, oh yeah, this phase is a little bit more hypertrophy, but we still have mobility in there. Oh, and there's conditioning because the style of training it is, we, we move in different planes of motion. We're hitting, Sometimes it's more cardio than it is. Uh, um, sometimes it's more anaerobic than it is aerobic. There's jumping. So plyometrics is involved. Strength, right? Depending on the type of phase it is. So with metabolic training, you can incorporate all of that. All Everything that you need to incorporate can be done when it's put out properly, right? When it's planned properly, which is why when I became a certified metabolic trainer, the first thing I realized is I can use that with fighters. I could use that with my boot camps. So professional athletes, world champions in not just MMA, but uh, I, I have, I've trained world champion rest. Uh, I've trained NCAA wrestlers uh, who uh, Olympic wrestlers, actually I've trained Muay Thai champions, jujitsu guys who, who just want uh, guys who were, this past ADCC, I trained one of the guys who was competing in this past, or I guess he lost, so ADCC jiu-jitsu, like kickboxers, like I have I looked at the list of, of the guys who've used my style of training, my workouts, they're champions in all different martial arts and in some sports because of the type of training that allows you to hit different physical attributes that we need as we get older, right? Like we are like athletes because we have to be moving in different planes of motion. If you have kids and your kid tries to, you know, tries to give you a little duke and you're trying to, you're trying to chase your kid here and there. You're not just chasing your kid like this. Your, your kid's going to try to outsmart you with a little, come on, dad, catch me. And you got to be like, all right, all right. I got to move here and there without going, ah, my bum knee, man, my knee. I can't do it anymore. Like we, we have to be able to move in different planes of motion. We got to, if we're fixing things or building things around the house, you know, you're standing here and you're holding something isometrically. You need to be able to hold that. You need to be able to keep the core tight. You need to uh, just grocery shopping and grabbing things and putting it into the cart and then having to stand with that, that cart and walking with the, you know, with all the bags, shopping bags or whatever, like your everyday work, if you're in construction, all of that stuff, we need to be training all of that. Right. And you can't do it all at once, but with a proper plan and, and proper metabolic resistance training, I could literally create a 10 exercise circuit, probably putting a lot of the stuff that I just talked about, uh, progressive overload, a hypertrophy exercise. I could put a mobility exercise in there. I can do like a cardio conditioning exercise. I can do a couple of unilateral and combination movements, isometrics. I could do a hold. Like I could literally hit 
all of these things within the 10 exercises and you could do one workout that would hit all of those things and do that for once a week for a month and and like that's the the magic of that and of course science with the science of epoch which is the afterburn effect not only are you building uh uh not only burning calories during, but you're burning calories after and then of course you're building muscle because you're moving in different planes of motion you're moving differently so you're built you're hitting all of those stabilizing muscles all the smaller muscle groups the type two the type one all of those things that you generally don't do when you're just going to the gym doing buys and tries or when you're just doing this because in the end it's going to help us be stronger it's going to help us uh be healthier and have less in injuries okay so number three is total body metabolic training number four is training with different, embracing different types of equipment and letting go of other types of equipment. Okay. So body. So let's talk about the equipment that for us, as we get older, would be like the top ones that you want to be striving to use body weight, of course, right? Because body weight allows us to practice the, the movements that we may not be good at squats. I still see guys squatting with their head down, bending over lunges, you know, you're kind of off offset push-ups, like just general exercises that we should be able to do. Again, if you haven't trained for a while, of course you don't expect you to come in and be doing blasting out air squats perfectly. But before you add load, any weight, you should be able to do the exercises without weight almost perfectly. Because once you add load or weight, that's going to add, or resistance, that's going to add a whole new, uh, you know, um, slew of things that you're going to have to focus on and engage. And if you can't do the, do the body weight addition properly or comfortably, then adding load or a movement pattern with load uh, is going to be very difficult on your joints and, and can set you up for, for failure. So body weight, definitely embrace body weight. But you can't stick to body weight because remember we need to build muscle, right? We need to build muscle and you can only build so much with body weight. We need to add weight training, which means we need to add resistance. So dumbbells, perfect resistance bands, perfect weight vests, perfect weight vests are great because you can still do body weight and still add load. Specifically, if you don't have um, dumbbells, resistance bands are phen phenomenal. Because again, the different resistance you get from resistance bands, not only not only is it very uh, humbling for those of you who have my resistance band program, specifically the muscle RBT muscle, it's humbling because now the bands are forcing our muscles to work differently, and it's easier on our joints. Um, kettlebells, of course, I always I always this. I mean, I would put this number one, but there's a little bit more. Uh, Te technical training you need to learn how to use the kettlebell but once you get once you learn kettlebells and so brandon v man you're killing it baby you're killing it i love it i love it i love it i love it angela loves you by the way <laughs> angela loves you uh, but, but when you now you now you're just opening up a like a completely new uh horizon of i don't even know if this is any such word but a horizon of exercises like you look it's like oh my god look at all the different things you can do because for me when i look on things like instagram um you know there, there's there's a specific type of kettlebell you know heart style kettlebell workouts that they generally doing the same thing over and over again you know the clean the presses which is fine but the ones who are innovative the ones who understand that the kettlebell can be so much more functional for us are the ones that are doing what looks weird because to me, it's not weird. Like I see them using in specific ways. I'm like, oh, that is great exercise. That is, I love that. Angela's very good at picking up on that stuff and doing her flows and all that other stuff. But in so many different ways that we that transfers over to our everyday life and everyday strength in, the, in those situations. Um, and um, these are your best friends. The, these are your best friends. Now, like, could you add a med medicine ball? Sure. Right. I mean, you know, you could you could literally put things together where you could have, OK, I got a med ball. I've got this. I got that. But I'm just trying to think of low barrier, low friction. Right. Like body weight, dumbbells. You know, you, you can buy dumbbells anywhere. Resistance bands. You just get a set of resistance bands. And, and if they're good quality there, you have that for life. A weight vest. You just grab a weight vest. 
kettlebells you have to grow but the th thing with kettlebells is you could literally have one or two kettlebells and still have an incredible amount of exercises and amazing results just with two different weights i mean for the longest time we only had 16s we only had 16s and 20 here at home for the longest period of time uh and uh, that's what we used and it was, it was fine but you probably didn't hear other types of <laughs> other types like barbells you probably didn't hear me say barbells and there's a reason why i didn't say barbells because barbells for us at our age is a waste of time and is a will increase your chances of injury because there a there's no reason for us to use a barbell there's no reason for us to to pick up a bar to put 245s on a plate or put it into a squat rack and then put all of that load on your back right putting a load of 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 whatever it is on your spine and then moving up and down in a squat that you may not even be doing properly there's the chest press the bench i have I haven't bench pressed in literally like 20 years. I don't even remember the last time I did a bench press because it is a technical movement, right? It's a technical movement. And when you use one, a barbell, it exposes your, it doesn't expose your weaknesses. One side, we're always, always, one side's always, uh, you know, uh, healthier and stronger than the other. So what happens when you're using a barbell in any barbell exercise, the, 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 the stronger part of your body is going to always take over, right? So if you're left side dominant, your left side is always going to take over, right? Specifically as you're getting, uh, as you're getting fatigued, but there, but, but now again, if you are a power lifter, yes, of course, even if you're in your forties or fifties as a power lifter, yes, of course. But if you want to build strength, you can use dumbbells and kettlebells to build overall strength. The, it's 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 the, the 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 juice is not worth the squeeze it's more ego at that point there's no reason for us to use you know barbells so and then you know like trx's and all that other stuff too there's just too many too many barriers i am a certified trx trainer i haven't used a trx in again 15 years it's too much there's too many things you got to learn how to, there's just too much for the again is the juice worth the squeeze I don't think so because you just have to learn way too much when you know you, you could you could get more out of a workout not saying it's not not to use it at all but on one there is one piece of uh, equipment that i am that i am investigating and i will get your feedback on this is the equalizer so an equalizer i used to have them but i, I gave them to my to my mma gym uh, an equalizer is a oh god they look like parallel bars but they're too big bars like they're light and you can carry them around and you may see some like calisthenics guys doing dips on them and pull-ups on them and they're just too yellow they're generally yellow okay um i used to use those a lot because specifically with with my uh with my boot camps and my fighters because you can mimic a lot of things like you can do underground underhand pull-ups you can do dips right some of the really yes thank you very much there they are exactly um, Nick, Nick has it right there. That those are the, those are the, uh, equalizers. They're not expensive, but you can do a lot more with equalizer. Like you can get those dips. I always think parallel dips are an incredible exercise, not only for shoulder stability, but also for the, for the triceps chest. Like it's a great, it's a great, it's a great exercise. So I like, I, I do like them. It's just, you know, like, again, like, you got to buy them. You got to, you know, like, am I going to do a whole program with just uh, equalizers and only six of you guys have the equalizer? No, I'm not going to do that. But is that a piece of equipment that I, I'm investigating a little bit more? Yes. Why? Because I know Mark Liebert extremely well. In fact, we are going to be, he wants to meet with me in a couple of weeks. So I know him very well. I know the guy who actually invented it. Uh, uh, you know, he lives, he lives not too close, not too far from me. So it may be something, I don't know, but it, I do like it though. I do like that piece of equipment as an added piece. You could do a, a full workout on it, or you can, you know, you can do like, okay, this, uh, this, you know, you could do like a, not a peanut, uh, like a circuit, right? So, okay, you know, set up four or five different stations in your place and which is what Angela and I do quite a bit here. You know, you have the resistance band squats, 
rest for 20 minutes, 20 seconds. You pick up the kettlebell and you do, you know, kettlebell swings and you move over here and you do dips on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the Lieberts and so on and so forth. But you, you get the picture there. There are some, like there are some pieces of equipment that, you know, should be your best friends and others that you kind of, you know, I don't need to do that anymore. Um, number five is adding core and abs to your training. So there is a very, uh, strategic reason why there's abs and core after every workout, because that is another thing that's often overlooked as we get older, or we're not doing the right ab and core training. So let's talk about the core. The core is, you know, if you ain't, if you're core ain't tight, you ain't doing it right. Right. Like the core is so important, not only for workouts, but for everyday things that we do everyday things that we do to keep our spine uh, in alignment and safe uh, to help us uh, lift heavier uh, to help us to make sure that we're more stable uh, in, in, in certain movements, in certain, if we're standing or for holding things, um, rotation and anti-rotation in certain things uh, that we do, the core is so important. It's, it's, and, and it's usually turned off a lot because we're sitting more than we're standing and, be, and having that ability to, to strengthen our core. And then when your core is stronger, it will, it makes you stronger in your workouts. It makes you strong in your everyday life, in your everyday life, when you're lifting up your kids or your, or, or something. And then abs, of course, we still need the ab strength because the core is, 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 you know, the core is made up from up here all the way to our, to, to the, uh, to the pelvic floor, right? And everything in between back, your posterior, your anterior, all the way from literally from here, all the way down to the pelvic floor. Abs, you have to train differently than core, right? Core, you're doing anti, you're doing rotational movements. You're doing anti-rotational movements so, so that, uh, you know, you you have things that will uh, not allow you to, you know, the, you have to re resist against. You're doing uh, anti-flexion uh, or sorry, anti-extension and anti-flexion because we're always in flex, flexion here doing this and driving. So we need to, to be strong and not succumb to flexion, specifically if we're holding a, a goblet like a dumbbell or a kettlebell i always say this guy's gonna stay stay straight don't don't bend over this wants you to to bend over it because that is also something that we're always doing um and then of course the extension too that's where you get that lower back pain um stability we need to be st stable and and um and uh we need that uh uh core strength just stable st stable core strength and then of course anti-lateral side flexion like we want we don't want to be doing this we want to be able to resist that right we want to be able to resist and not with that exercise where you're doing with the dumbbell that's that's actually the worst ab exercise on the planet in fact next two crunches that's a, that's the worst on the planet picking up a freaking dumbbell and doing this is absolutely horrible not only is it not good for your core but it also adds bulk to your obliques which will make you look even bigger and even fatter. Anyways, that's so if you have been doing that exercise, don't do it anymore. Anyways, so that that's your that's the core. And then the abs, of course, you're hitting upper abs, lower abs. You know, it's broken up into different sections, your obliques. So you need to have both of those because again, it's gonna help us in everyday life, right? Like I I I all say this, but whenever um the guy this this 18 liter bottle comes we get you know two three four five of those delivered pretty much every week and we have a very narrow staircase and angela and i always are always um we're always we always have this game where i'll pick up both two of those and be able to carry them all the way up the the stairs why because before i even pick it up it's like my mind already goes okay engage the core keep the core tight engage it right i'm not going to be moving crazy i'm going to keep my elbows tight to the body so they're, they're not out here and you'll be surprised how and when whenever the person delivering looks at i mean he's like man i can't believe you can lift that but angela can literally do the same thing because it's about knowing what to engage it's about knowing what to keep like very very tight and the only way you would know how to do that is by incorporating that into your training right because again it's overall because try doing that without keeping your core tight and you're just setting yourself up for injury right uh, and there's sometimes where i'm a little bit fatigued i'm like okay today i'm just gonna carry 
one up and I'm going to actually have two hands on it <laughs> because I don't want to, I'm a little bit tired today, but the core still stays tight and everything stays uh, right. So that is number five. You need to make sure that you have ab and core training after every training session. And again, with ab and core, that's one of those things you can do on a daily basis, six days a week, as long as you're hitting different movements, anti-movements and different exercises. Uh, number six is honor your pre-workout uh, warm-up and post-workout stretch, specifically at our age. Yes, at our age, we're probably, if you are, um, like if you do a sport or, um, you know, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you, if you're playing a sport and you're playing with younger guys, right. Or even older guys, but mostly younger guys, generally speaking, you're probably going to be the guy that's going to get there early. So you can get a longer warm up because you're going to need that longer warm up to wake, to, to activate the glutes to, you may even bring your freaking uh, your uh, foam roller because again, we have to be smart, right? We want to, we want to maximize our, our, our playing time with whatever sport we're doing or practice or whatever it is. We want to, we want to, we want to maximize it. We want to have fun. We don't want to get injured and we want to dominate, but that means we have to come a little bit early. We've got to wake everything up. We've got to get the, you know, get the, 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 our, our central nervous system woken up. We've got to do some core activation, some glute activation, depending on what, 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 uh, what sport you're playing. You got to activate your, your, your back, your lats, right. With the, with the resistance bands, face pulls. Right. And then you start to feel good. Okay. I'm loose, but that takes time. We can't just show up anymore. Like we used to, I mean, when I used to play, I used to play a professional sport. I used to play a sport. I'm, I'm going to stop saying professional. I used to play a sport indoor, indoor volleyball. And I would never warm up. Well, I warm up by hitting balls as hard as I can because I wanted to impress all the fans that were there. But stretching after? Never. I never stretched. I was the guy that when you go to the beach, you're supposed to actually set up the nets, right? You're supposed to actually go set up the nets and then you break the nets down. I was the guy who would literally be sitting hundred yards away, watching them set up the nets, come in. And then as soon as practice is over, I'm gone. I hated being that guy, but that's who I was. And that most of the times, because when I was just get coming up, I had to set up the nets and I had to take them down. And I had to do that because I was the younger cat on the tour. But when all the younger guys came, I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. Now I would do that. Now I have a whole different, I have a whole different mindset because by running the tour, I had to do that. But the point I'm trying to make is we can't just show up and then leave and go home and then think we got, we got to take the time before and after, because after our workouts, this is the, this is the one where we do go because oh, we don't, I don't have time. I'll just do this later. This is the one that, that, that gets, that gets thrown away the most but it's the most important because it's going to help us. It's not going to make us more flexible or more mobile. It's going to keep our ROM, our, our, uh, it's going to keep our, uh, um, you know, all that tightness at bay, right? Our DOMS, our delayed onsite muscle soreness at bay. Because if you don't stretch and you start to get tight, specifically if, you're, if, you're, if it's your legs, then you go back to your next workout you're already coming in a little bit tighter. That you're right there. You're signaling your body. Oh, I'm not even. It doesn't matter how much you try to warm up this time because you've gone two or three workouts without even stretching after, and now your body's in prime position to get injured. We're not young anymore, so we've got. So we on we almost have to treat our warm ups and our post stretch as important, if not more important, than the workout because we want to sustainably be training for years to come and go on hikes and go do things that we we love to do and that's where all of that comes into play you have to honor and respect it even more um you know this is to, for me this is sauna season now this is sauna season so uh you know another another study just came out 2022 that 15 minutes after uh 15 minutes of sauna after every single workout three times a week not only gives you better heart health but also helps with fat loss and of course, recovery and all the other great things that get sitting in a sauna works. So get yourself a portable sauna if you don't already have a, an awesome sauna built into your house. If 
you if, if you live if you live in Finland or Sweden, I think that that's like a, a prerequisite. I think houses actually like we come. Are, no, okay. <laughs> what, Johan? Most houses come in Finland. Don't they come with saunas? Maybe not yours. Oh, okay. Well, then, then this thing is okay. Well, this is. I guess they're they're throwing a little. Maybe it's Sweden. I don't know. Anyways, one of those North, not one of those, one of those Scandinavian countries. A lot of the houses I have them built in. Okay, some of them do. Maybe, maybe I got I got to check my facts. But um, regardless, um, if you don't have one or you've been thinking of getting one, they're not expensive. Um, I don't do the infrared because it's just not. I don't, I, just, I don't trust the infrared stuff. But I'm not saying it's bad. It's just for me, uh, I get the steam. And, uh, you know, adding those saunas will definitely help with everything that I said. Um, but definitely honoring that pre warm up and post workout stretch is key is key. Next up is you grow when you rest, right? So as I mentioned before, the recovery day is important, right? And when I say rest, um, I'm not just generally saying like, don't do anything because usually Sunday is the, the day where you're just not really going to do much, if anything, but it's the rest, right? It's, it's your muscles grow during the recovery period, nutrition, of course, sleep, of course, but ensuring that you have the recovery techniques in place, the massage, uh, you know, with the massage gun, uh, sauna, um, mobility, uh, yoga, um, going to get a massage, you know, biohacking, this is where your biohacking uh, things come in. This is if you're, if you've heard of the term biohack, um, you know, just little things that you add to your health to, to, to hack your health. So that's what, you know, massage guns, biohacking, sauna, biohacking, uh, going out, uh, floating. I haven't floated in a while, but we're going to go back to floating. Um, that's biohacking. Um, you know, going to the uh, cold therapy, like all of those things, hot cold therapy, just at home, ice baths, all of those things. That helps with recovery. That helps with health. That helps. Those are little techniques that we can implement. It's not all at once, but you just start adding little things. I've been killing the massage gun lately and I love it. It's just, it's added that whole, you know, again, it's another 10 minutes after um, I eat. So, you know, sauna, sauna, shower, eat, and then grab the massage gun because you're going to do it for 10, 15 minutes and just use that, use Bob and Brad's massage gun. It's, it's freaking, I love it. I love it. Um, specifically if it's a good one, because I used to have another one that was just so frustrating. It would stop when you didn't want it to stop. It was big and clunky. I got Brad and Bob's and man, levels, you, you know, quality as we get older, man, we got to focus on quality. <laughs> we got to focus on quality shit. When we're younger, we can get away with just, ah, I'm going to get this one. Now, as we get older, we got to focus on getting quality equipment. Spend more because it's going to last longer and it's going to get you better results, 100%. But yeah, just, just you know, ensuring that we, we have the recovery stuff in place because that's going to allow us to train longer. The mobility, the yoga, all those things I just talked about. Recover quicker, uh, build more muscle, and of course, let us, uh, we're going to be more sustainable. Um, I think I'm on number eight or nine. I can't remember because the numbers here are all messed up. Uh, but the next commandment is making sure that you switch your workouts every four to six weeks and every 90 days you take a week off. Periodization is key. Training blocks are important. Okay. That's 100 specifically again, as we get older, when we're younger, you can get away with just willy nilly things now we've got to make sure there's some type of periodization going on which which and it'll all, all depend on on what type of programming you're doing um what what phases you're you're in in your training um and switching up i generally like to switch things up every four weeks because again six weeks just is a little bit too long for me again four to six doesn't matter and, it, and that also depends on actually what you're doing like if you're training for some specific, you may need the six week periodization. Whereas for me, four weeks is perfect. Um, and then you switch and you change up the either exercises, protocols, the training modality, depending on what the long term is. And then every 90 days, you're taking, you know, you're taking a week off. And that could be a deload week where when I say deload, meaning you're not you're not putting as much volume in a little bit more recovery, a little less volume in your workouts, or you can literally just take a week off. I've done that where I've literally just said, you know what, 
aside from maybe a walk here and there, my body just needs needs complete, you know, uh, just to, to, to chill for a whole week. And most of those times, not only do I burn more calories, but I'm hungry to work out when I get back. They, they, that hunger is there. The only type of people that can do this are people who are, um, are self-motivated and committed. Like this is not like if you if you're struggle to get workouts in and then you take a week off, it's going to be a struggle to, to get back into training. But if you are like, OK, there's no problem. I, I do need it. And, and I have I'm actually having difficulty uh, not working out like those type of people. You guys can actually get away with this kind of stuff. Um, you know what I mean? Because there's a hunger there. And you also understand, OK, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm giving my body a chance to recover. I have no problem getting back in in fact i can't wait but i do need to take some time there's other people who if you're like i said if you're struggling i still say you take the 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 you change you take a week off every you do a deload every 90 days it's just there's a difference between a deload which just means you're still going to do stuff it's just less volume and less intensity and literally taking the week off and not doing anything like that so there's a difference the week off people are people who are self-committed they self-motivated, they understand what they're doing, may even have difficulty taking the week off, but know that they're hungry to move into that next training block. And for people who are still kind of struggling to, to get back in and don't want to lose momentum, because either way, you're not losing momentum. Momentum's all up here, but uh, in, some, in some cases, but you don't want to lose momentum. You're just going to do a deload week where you're still going to do things. It's just a lot less on the body. And that's, that's so that the body can recover. It can do what it needs to do. Uh, and again, remember this is about sustainability. I started this whole 10 command for the workouts out by saying that we, we cannot stop training as we get older. Like that's not, that, that can't happen. Like there's no, Oh, I haven't trained for two months that, that, that can't come out of our, that can never come out of our mouth again like because that just unless you're injured but even if you're injured you're doing stuff to nurse that injury you're not just sitting around but those days are over like when we're in our 60s we're still doing stuff when our 70s we're still doing things 80s we're still training the training may be different but the i'm not training anymore or you know um uh, i haven't trained in two months because of this or because this happened in my life or because i moved here that can't happen anymore I can't. It's just too difficult to get back. And 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 the momentum now, the this is where momentum comes in. It's difficult <clears throat> to get that up. <clears throat> the next is protein after every workout. Having protein after every workout is more and more important as we age because as we age we, we're not getting enough protein. Protein is the building blocks of our muscles, our bones, and the metabolic processes. Now, do we need to be eating protein like the liver king um, does online? And, or if we're a bodybuilder? No, we don't need to be like protein dominant because it's not the, because it does have a thermic effect, which means thermic effect of food means it takes your body longer to digest protein. Okay, that's why we only really eat three days, three times a day. Because anymore, you're just putting too much stress on the body, too much stress in the digestive system, which increases cortisol, destroys the digestive system, and 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 that protein that we're that we need is not getting to what where we need it. The metabolic processes, the muscles, the bones, every, everything else, which is one of the reasons why we only eat three times a day. But that doesn't mean that you don't eat enough that we don't eat protein, right? And I'm talking meals. I'm not talking a protein shake because a protein drink is just a drink with protein in it that's not a meal that's just getting more protein because we generally don't get enough protein and the longer we've been training the more the healthier we are the more muscular we are the 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 yeah the healthier we are the muscular the less fat we have etc we need more protein because now our bodies are metabolizing a lot more we, we're healthier so that protein is getting to where it needs to go so having a protein shake or drink after a workout which it's just a scoop of protein and water is perfect because what that does is it starts the recovery process right it feeds our muscles it starts to 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 get that recovery um after that workout in and then of course you're still going to eat a 
protein at you. This is not to, to take away from the food that you're actually going to eat that has protein in it. It's just after your workout, get that protein in. If you can add BCAAs, perfect as well, because we got to feed that muscle. We got to make sure that we're getting enough protein on a daily basis. So that is key to uh, whatever protein that is for you. We, that's a whole different story, but start thinking about getting that in. Right? It's very, very, very important. Um, we're not getting enough protein, which is crazy. We're, we're not getting enough of the macros that we need on a daily basis. But anyway, not saying you guys specifically, I'm just saying in general, one to 1. 1.2 grams per kilogram. I can't remember what that is man, off the top of my head. Um, I can't remember what the top of my head, but we need, we do need to make sure we're getting enough protein. Um, other things is never skip a workout. Consistency is key. Here, here's some just bonuses, right? Never skip a workout. Consistency is key. Whether you can only do it for 20 minutes, whether you can only do two or three rounds or two rounds of a three round program workout, don't skip it. Get it in. Here's the other thing too. Make sure as you get older, as you get healthier, as your joints get better, to please add activities and sports that you love. Please. And these activities and sports will overtake a workout. Okay, that, so I'm not saying you have to work out and then add the activities and sports. No, no, no. If you are playing hockey or baseball or basketball or whatever it is on, on you know, two times a week, jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai two times a week, then you're really generally only going to be training or working out the other two days, right? We want to get back to the things we love doing. <clears throat> we want to do the sports and activities that we love to do. And do it healthy and 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 because that makes us feel good right so um yeah that's a that's a big thing for me like <laughs> that's a huge thing for me and i'd love to see all you guys get back to the sports you love to play <clears throat> and then finally follow a workout routine very very important that's been planned out for you so yes yeah, so i'm doing a little plug but i'm not really plugging because of the coaching call <laughs> anyways if you decide that you're like hey you know what funk i want to try another type of workout or i want to do something different you know i just want to just want to see what's out there just make sure that if you do do that that it's a plan that's been planned out that it's from someone who knows what they're doing like don't don't digress if you know what I mean, like going to the gym now and going, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to switch. I'm going to just switch up a little bit funk. There's a great train. There's a trainer gym. I'm going to use a trainer. Meanwhile, trainers 20 years old. They haven't really trained anybody and they're not really giving you a plan. Like you guys are, you guys could literally train people because you have, you, you're, you've been doing this for so long that if you just literally step back and did like a, 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 a mini training course, to put everything in together, you guys can literally be trainers because you've, you've not only done it and trained yourselves, but you're, you, you have all the tools that I've just talked about already. They're in here somewhere. You just have to, you know, you have to actually go, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I can set up a workout that has, you know, it would be easier for me to learn how to set up a workout that has these different movements because I've been doing that type of stuff. Right. So that's all I'm saying. If you're, if you want to do something and try something different, because there is a lot out there. I mean, I don't know how much there is a lot for us guys still at our age, but there's, there's quite a bit of stuff out there. You may go, I want to just try this and see what happens, but just please make sure that you're not digressing, right? You're not going to something from that's made up with, from someone that has no clue what they're doing because then you're just, I mean, it's, there's no sense. That's all, but make sure it's a routine. Right. Cause I, there's some things I don't do. Like if you want bodybuilding, I'm not, a, I can't help you with that. That's why Brian and his sister and his sister, Brian and his wife, you know, they, they went to, they asked me, they said, can you coach us through this? I'm like, I can't, I don't know how to, like, I don't, I don't know how to, I'm not a bodybuilder. My wife, but she could, but she's busy. I said, go get a coach who knows exactly what you're doing. And then same with, uh, God, I can't remember his name who, who, uh, who cycled in the world master cycling Tyrone same thing he asked me can you help me I've got listen Tyrone, I don't know anything about cycling at your your thing so what did he do he we he 
actually he brought both of us in. So I helped with the, with the strength and conditioning. And so I would give him things. And then his coach um, took some of the things that I did and said, okay, this would probably work. And together he, he, you know, he did whatever he did with the cycling. So just my whole point is just make sure that, uh, you know, it is someone who knows what they're doing because don't, don't, uh, you guys know a lot. You guys know a lot um, already. So, um, and then if it is a sport and you want to know how to, how to incorporate, I always tell you guys, email me and I will help, help do that. And, and, um, you know, try to give you a plan that you can do that make, ensures that you are still able to play whatever sport you want, but uh, make sure you are following a routine. And that's it, man. That's, that's, that's pretty much it in regards to the, the, the rules. I don't know if that was 10 because now my things are all over the place, but let me just go back over number one, stop doing long cardio as your normal workout. Okay. Long cardio bouts on the elliptical, what have you, uh, stay away from bodybuilding, bro splits, traditional weight training, unless you're going to stand on, on the stage. And also on the flip side, the really high intensity. Now, can you do CrossFit? Yes. If you want to compete in the CrossFit games, 100%, you have to actually go to a CrossFit gym, learn their techniques, learn how to, how to technically clean, uh, clean and press, do jerks, all that stuff. 100%. I'm not saying not to do that. In fact, I would love to see, you know, guys who are like, listen, you know what? I, I feel like I'm pretty good. I can, I want to, I want to compete next year's masters CrossFit games. Well, you're definitely going to have to go. You have the nutrition in place. You have some recovery focus in place. Um, but you would have to train for CrossFit specifically. Um, Number three would be total body metabolic resistance training. So metabolic workouts, 20 to 30 minutes, things that we're doing that incorporate progression, hypertrophy, mobility, conditioning, unilateral combination movements, isometrics, functional stuff, move, moving in all planes, all uh, uh, ranges of motion, um, rotational, anti-rotational, et cetera. You know, embracing uh, exercise equipment that kind of like are going to be your best friends, you know, like obviously your own body weight, but dumbbells, resistance bands, weight vests, kettlebells, um, you know, staying away from, from the barbell stuff just because it's just, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Um, adding core and ab workouts to your everyday training, right? Uh, every, all your workouts and even every day you can do that. There's nothing wrong with, with hitting ab, ab and core every day. It's just, you have to make sure that you, we're not doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? Um, yes, weekly, but not daily. Um, honor the pre-workout and your post-workout stretch, right? That is, I mean, that's what's going to keep us healthy. That's what's going to keep us strong. That's what's going to keep us injury-free. It may take a little bit longer. We may have to show up a little bit longer or, or, or early, and we're going to probably be leaving early, late. We'll be the last people to leave after a training session and the first people to get there. I'm just talking about if it was a sport, but in general, you're going to put more time into it. There's a lot of times where we're training up here and it'll be like, Oh, we better go take, take a shower. But again, no, no, look, we got to get a stretch in. We got to get a stretch in. Let's put on some music and we got to get a post post range of motion. So you put on a, some music that you like and you're outside and then you just kind of stretch because I always say, man, if we don't do it now, we're going to tomorrow. And then you just, all you have to do is just, just like, Play the tape forward. You know how how uh, how tight your your mostly the hamstrings, you know, you know your hips, and when that happens, the knees. That's when you get knee. You're walking up the stairs, your knees. Why do my Why does my knee hurt? Well, yeah, because you just did two workouts. You didn't do anything for your hips. You did nothing for your your hamstrings, you know, and your ankles. Like you're not doing any mobility. Of course, your <laughs> knees are gonna hurt every time you walk, right? So um, honor that. Number seven, you grow when you rest, but you also set yourself up even more to de decrease the chances of injury when you um, really, truly embrace your recovery, right? So resting, of course, seven to nine hours uh, of sleep, resting on that Sunday, but recovery, you know, mobility, uh, yoga, biohacking with, you know, things like the sauna and, and uh, hot, cold showers, and um you know massage guns all those little things that that are that you know biohacky but uh, good good supplementation um number eight is making sure that we switch our training modality every four to six weeks 
four weeks that we do here and definitely take either a deload or a complete rest week every 90 days, every three months. Um, number nine, protein, have a, have a, a protein drink after every workout, after every training session, after every sport, just starts the recovery process. Um, number 10, uh, you know, I kind of add a whole bunch in here. Never skip a workout. Consistency is key. Um, and then the bonus is make sure that if there's a sport that you loved to play or that you've always wanted to play, um, that you play it, do it. Like, that's the whole point. I'm trying to get you guys back out into things that we love to do, activities. If you're a rock climber or you like hiking or you like biking, you know, whatever, like, like, Again, it's just it's just things that you love to do, um, you know, sports and activities that you love to do. We can set set it up so that we can get you back into the doing those things without um, without still still working at getting the workouts and not all four, but maybe a couple here. Just there's a strategy behind that because again, we don't want you to get injured. So like I, that's why I mentioned if you're playing baseball, you're 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 showing up early. That's the bottom line. You're showing up early. Right. Uh, if you're playing hockey, you're 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 the first in the dressing room doing glute activation and all of that stuff to start waking up the body so that you can have a good skate. Or if you're playing baseball, you can you know you can dominate there or basketball or soccer or whatever it is. Um, and uh, the other bonus is make sure that you follow a workout routine that's been planned by somebody who knows what they're doing. Right? Who knows what they're doing? Anyways, I'm excited for you guys. Have a great week. And um, yeah, we'll see you see you throughout the week. Love you guys, man.